Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultural and artistic practice is innovative, it's always pushing the boundaries. Being chosen as a finalist as an emerging artist can be a huge thing. It sort of brings a national spotlight onto them. So to have this platform so early in a career can be life-changing. It can also be really encouraging and that's what I think is the most important part is it encourages artists to continue their practice. The Telstra National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Art Awards have been running for 38 years. It's the longest running awards um, dedicated to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander artists. It shows that there was early recognition that these artists deserve to have accolades and deserve to have a national platform. This work speaks to country and Timo's custodianship of his land and his father's land. Wadi Kujara Chukupa is really prevalent in this work and that's the two men creation line. And Timo's shown parts of this story in the work. You see the two men represented up here and you see Wanapi, the water serpent, skirting the edge of the lake here. What I love about this work is, I thought this was just a flat sort of white space, but the subtle shifts in colour in the Salt Lake regions that Timo paints is just really beautiful and so delicate. Not only is the scale overwhelming, you kind of are enveloped by it when you're in front of it. I think it's a really beautiful piece and I really enjoy being able to see this work in person. I'm a top end girl. I am an Arabana, Wotathi and Moorgar woman and I grew up on Limigan Woolner country in Humpty Doo as well as in Darwin on Larrakia land. Coming each year to the Telstra Natsia and being in awe of the works, where they were all from, finding out about all the different stories that were being told. I remember the year that the Jumpy uh, Desert Weavers created the gorgeous ute, the iconic ute. It's one of those works that just stays with you. I'm really interested in being this facilitator where I can help artists who are the storytellers who I want to uphold and give space to and care for. I can do that role. One of the most amazing things about this exhibition each year is that we have established senior artists beside emerging artists and we have generations represented. And that's really beautiful to have this space where younger artists can be beside their heroes. I think that's one of the most beautiful parts of this exhibition. And I think that that's what's really amazing about the legacy of Natsia is that by this point now, we've had thousands of artists apply. We've had hundreds, if not thousands of finalists. And that's a community of people. That's a community of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander artists who get to know each other, who get to look to each other's work and practice and get to be exhibited together when they otherwise might not be. It's been quite challenging. It's a huge honour and huge responsibility to curate this show. The works need to all stand on their own and be able to have their own space, but you need to make sure that you care for them all and make sure that they're together in a culturally appropriate way as well as they're considered on the wall together, um, what stories are being told beside each other because we've got many collaborative pieces and understand the stories and cultural backgrounds, the language groups that are represented. To be Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander today is not one thing. It is uh, a rich and varied experience. I think it's always important for a curator of Aboriginal art and material culture or First Nations culture is Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander or First Nations themselves. I always have the approach of nothing about us without us. And I think it's really important just to have that voice represented at every level. And I'm lucky that I can be in this role and do my part. For me, I want to make sure that I'm caring for these works, caring for the ancestors represented in this collection. I'm extremely excited to spend time really growing these connections with community that for me is the most important thing and making sure that our collections are cared for because they're not dormant. The collections are part of living cultures. I really want people from community to feel safe in coming in and accessing that in spending time and helping me understand the beautiful stories that are held by us just for this short time. <laughs>